Chapter 24 Trouble in Moscow A month went by, and the news from the CIA's Moscow station was not at all good. Mr. Pym had failed to show up for the August 4th meeting. Rochford was concerned, but tried to comfort himself by thinking of several possible explanations. Perhaps there had been a missed signal. Rochford knew how difficult it was to operate inside the Russian capital under the noses of the FSB. Perhaps the CIA officer was unable to dry clean himself satisfactorily and had aborted their scheduled meeting. Perhaps Sherbakov, a trained counterintelligence officer, had broken off contact if he believed he may have spotted surveillance near the CIA man as the officer neared the site for the handoff. Or Sherbakov may have gotten cold feet. He was taking a huge risk. If something went wrong, he would be arrested and imprisoned, if not worse. He had access to his big upfront payment, which had been deposited in a business account. Had he decided to take the money and flee? Not for the first time, the thought crossed Rochford's mind that perhaps there never was a file, and it was all a scam. If so, Rochford knew he had better prepare to look for work in the private sector. His future as an FBI counterspy was on the line. His concern turned to intense alarm when Mr. Pym failed to show for the September 4th backup meeting. Clearly, the operation was in big trouble. Rochford managed to send word to Sherbakov. Come back. We need to talk. In late September, Mr. Pym arrived in New York again, to be met by a relieved Mike Rochford. At least the Russian had not disappeared. At the same time, Rochford was both worried and angry. Alex, he asked, what the hell happened? Mr. Pym was evasive, but as Rochford listened to his excuses, he concluded that he had been hiding from the Irkutsk Mafia the whole time. Facing a death threat, he apparently holed up in his apartment for almost three months, fearing to set foot outside. It was the only explanation that made sense. But it meant that the operation to find the mole had now been unexpectedly derailed by the Russian mob. It was a bizarre twist and threatened to destroy Rochford's years of patient work. If Mr. Pym failed to show for the handoff a third time, the naysayers at FBI headquarters would have a field day at Rochford's expense. The stakes were made clear to Mr. Pym. The sooner he passed the file to the CIA in Moscow, the sooner he could return to the U.S., collect the rest of his seven million, and remain in the U.S. for good. Once safely back on American soil, the CIA and FBI would protect him from both the Irkutsk killers and the SVR. Mr. Pym agreed to return to Moscow, and he promised to hand over the file on November 4th. <laughs>